Hi there, sugar snaps. When you're browsing a yarn store, you can find yarn in a variety of different thicknesses, textures, obviously colors. When you spin your own yarn, the outcome is up to you. Today I'm going to share a three ply yarn using a chaining technique. If you have done any crochet, you might recognize this chain technique as the start of a crochet project. This is a three ply or a chain ply, which means that you're taking three singles, three strands of yarn or fiber that's been spun and twisting them together to make a three strand yarn. A few videos ago, I shared a two ply yarn. You can check out that video here where I spun two bobbins of yarn and spun them together to create a two ply. For this three strand chain ply, you will just need one bobbin of single spun yarn and an empty bobbin. To start out with, you need to spin your first bobbin full of fiber. I have this blue variegated yarn that I spun. This is actually an old bobbin of yarn. I spun this many years ago and I'm just getting around to spinning it or applying it. So I have this guy and I have my Ashford traditional. I have loaded my Ashford traditional with a fresh bobbin and threaded the leader yarn through my hooks, through the orifice hole here and here. And now it's ready and wrapped onto my mother of all knob here on the mother of all, ready to go. So to start out, I'm going to mount this bobbin of spun single onto a lazy Kate. That is this contraption right here. This is set up so that you can do three bobbins at a time. This is if you wanna do a three ply using three separate bobbins of yarn, if you're just spinning it. Similar to how we did the two ply yarn, but with three strands. This will be different because we'll be using one bobbin to spin a three ply yarn. So I'll take out this piece and mount this bobbin onto my Lazy Kate. And every spinning wheel comes with a slightly different Lazy Kate. This system is common for quite a few different kinds of wheels. You can also do this in a cardboard box. Watch the two ply yarn video on how to create a box Lazy Kate out of a shoe box. For this guy, I'm going to set it beside me on the floor and grab the end of the yarn to start the plied process. Now you'll set your Lazy Kate beside you and then undo the leader yarn from your spinning wheel or thread it through. And I like to have a loop in the end of my leader yarn so that I have something to loop my singles through when I begin spinning. This is not necessary. You can attach it onto the end with the twist. So I'm going to open up that loop and fold over some of the yarn here so that I have them overlapped and I have a loop at the end. So I'll thread this loop of my single through the loop on the leader yarn to create a loop to work with. Okay, so my loop is threaded through here and I'm going to start spinning. Now, when I spin my singles, I spin in a clockwise direction so that I know when I go back to do any plying, I'm going to spin in the opposite direction. So you spin twist into your singles one way, you spin twist out of your singles to ply them going the other direction and that twists them together making a nice even balanced yarn, which means that there's not so much twist in it that it kinks up and just becomes kind of a gnarled mess. You are balancing it out by taking out some twist and causing that twist to twist the two strands, or in this case, three strands together. So I'm going to go backwards, get my bobbin started, get your bobbin started, and start to add some twists. And you can see some twists has already entered. Now that you might recognize this from crocheting if you've done that, if not, that's okay. In this loop here, the starting off loop, you're going to reach through with your thumb and your forefinger and grab the single from where we started. Right now it looks like it's doubled up because we have the overlap. And I'm going to create a new loop. So I've just chained this through. You can see it coming through this loop here. And I'm creating a loop 
with that strand. And then I'm going to release that first loop and start spinning. And you can see I've, already, I've begun to get a three ply yarn here. And now I have a loop and I have my fingers. There's this piece overlapping my loop. I'm going to reach in with my thumb and forefinger and pull through to create another chain. Pull out a length. I like to go about five inches, maybe a little bit more. And continue to spin. You might need to play around with your tension in order for it to get pulled onto your bobbin. And you can see again, that little bit of spun plied yarn. So again, I'll pull through, pull out a length and spin that up. And the flow is that you spin and you pull at the same time. So I'm allowing the twist to enter the yarn there, up the length of the yarn, using my thumb and forefinger of my left hand to slide the twist into the yarn that I've chained with my right hand. So I take a chain and I pull that twist through the yarn and then I pinch and then I take a chain and pull that twist through the yarn. Continuing a steady rhythm with my treadling foot or if you want to balance it out, you can have both feet on the wheel to treadle the wheel. And you can see this yarn is really fun how variegated it's showing up in this ply. Getting all kinds of fun colors here. Like this, you can see the three strands, the dark royal blue, the kind of baby blue and the turquoise twisting together. And here on the bobbin, it's starting to build. Now, as you can see, it's starting to squeeze out the bottom here. So I'm going to move it down a hook so that it starts to wind up further down the bobbin. You can start to see that building up here right away as I move it down. So I'll fill that up about the same level as this and just continue to fill the bobbin and then work in the other direction and keep going back and forth to build the layers so that I don't end up with an uneven bobbin. Now to break down the chain ply a little bit more so that you can begin to practice it and maybe it makes, it'll help it make a little more sense. I'm going to explain what each of my hands is doing as I'm doing this. So I'm gonna rotate this around so that it stops moving. There we go. Okay, so I'm holding, steadying the yarn with my left hand as I'm working and I'm using my thumb and my forefinger of my right hand to keep my chain loop open. So you can see I've got this loop kind of reverse pinched <laughs> between my fingers. So I'm spreading it apart so that I can grab with my forefinger and pull this through and then reach down and grab that single again to create my next piece. So then I've moved my fingers and I'm just constantly using my fingers to keep this loop open so that I can keep going and take a new chain, grab a new length of that single and keep chaining down the length of the yarn. And with my left hand, I'm guiding the twist into the yarn as I chain. And that keeps the twist away from my chaining so that I can continue to chain and the twist doesn't get into where I'm trying to pull, which will make the chaining process harder. So let me spin this onto the wheel. So you can see I'm guiding with my left hand and right before it catches where I've stopped, 
I pinch and hold it, and pull down. I'm gonna stop, pinch and hold it, and do a new chain. And gently slide down, pinch and pull, creating that continuous chain. And you will get a little bit of a knob every time the yarn folds over itself. So where that loop happens, you'll end up seeing the loop in the yarn. Usually that works itself out as you're spinning. Depending on how thick or even your yarn is, it will become invisible as, as you begin to spin your yarn. And as you knit it or crochet or do whatever you're doing with it, it will get worked into the overall material and you won't see that little knob, but it does mean that the spaces in between each knob may be obvious, especially when it changes color like this. You can see where the two loops, where they looped over each other here and the color changes. So trying to keep the space between each chain even will mean that your color changes are more even if you're using a variegated color like this. And that's it. That's how you three ply yarn using the chain ply method. Now you can put your new yarn on a nitty knotty to create a skein or wind it up into a ball. I suggest washing it to loosen it up. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe to see more of my videos and I'll see you in my next video. Happy making.